introduce uh, Louis Campos, um, who's a colleague at Rosemary College. Um, Dr. Campos um, is going to talk about the work of the Andrew Ensemble. Um, but I would also like to mention the fact that he is the co editor with Jane of the last uh, set of papers on music on the stage. So, thank you. Thank you, and also thank you, Jane, for inviting me again. <laughs> Um, first of all, I'd like to say that um, what I'm about to read or discuss with you is, is a little bit of a thinking process, meaning how I'm thinking at this moment in some of the areas that I am researching. So more than coming in with a fully realized paper, I'm coming in with some thoughts and some ideas in terms of how I'm looking at this practice and this dramaturgical structure. The, uh, the title of the, the paper or the discussion, Music on the Stage as the Creation of Visual Dramaturgic Atmospheres. And this is one of the angles that I'm looking quite keenly at this moment. What, what becomes or how can we uh, categorize an atmosphere in theatrical practices in the world of ensembles, uh, Eloise, and the chorus of the Golden Whisk. The work of Bristol-based theater company, the work of ensemble, is composed of nine performers, devisers, and musicians who create interdisciplinary theatrical work that makes new plays explore and I quote, the human condition in the 21st century. Quite out there. The visual dramaturgy is in storytelling among others, and I quote, where the emotional and the intellectual collide. I'm also really happy to say that the work of ensemble is a, is a recently created company. Uh, uh, founded by two uh, Rose Group of graduates, one from ETA and one from the European Theatre Arts and the other one from Pan American Theatre Arts. So that collaboration that started really early on when they were in the second year uh, after graduation had continued and they have become quite they have become quite established in their in the type of work that they do. In the current piece, in the least in the course of the Golden Whisk, the company integrates musical segments from its dramaturgical composition. These are explored using instruments, songs, and the creation of sonic environments with the use of technologies such as the loop pedal and acoustic sequences executed through the transformative use of objects. This paper presentation claims that the incorporation of these musical fragments can be also analyzed through the critical point of view of dramaturgical visuality. <clears throat> that is, and I define, as the object of visual analysis is the way things become visible as a result of the practices of looking invested in them. Bricker, 2011. Seeing thus, the activation of visual landscapes enable the creation of their dramaturgical atmospheres and the emergence of narrative interrelated occasions. Following Martina Lowe, this paper also sees these atmospheric and visual spaces as spaces that develop their own potentiality, which can influence viewers. Uh, this potentiality of the spaces I call atmosphere. End of quote, Lowe, 2008. From this perspective of potentiality, and following Erin Manning and Jules Deleuze, the argument here claims that these potentialities amalgamate the objective and the subjective in the, in the ontological model of emerging and coming into being in the dramaturgical fragments. Some images from some images from Michelle in Bristol, which is uh, the most recent production. Uh, in, um, I just want to draw your attention in terms of not only how the musical elements are incorporated in the, on the stage, but also how the musical elements become part of their of three acoustic sounds uh, and intermediate of theater practices. Um, the etymology of the word atmosphere can be traced back to the Greek atmos, which means vapor, steam, and spare, sphere. In everyday language, the word atmosphere is used interchangeably with mood, feeling, ambience, tone, and other ways of naming collective effects. Here, 
We also understand the warmer atmosphere following Anderson 2009 as the elusive and almost identifiable air that imbues and develops a given situation and participates in the global awareness of the situation. <clears throat> Another aspect that is worth discussing uh, in relation to the concept of atmosphere or how I understand them, the concept of atmosphere is the nature of atmospheres as transient and ephemeral. Anderson described these transients in his idea of atmosphere stars, and I quote, perpetually forming and deforming, appearing and disappearing as body center interrelation with one another. Anderson 2009. Following this statement, one could say, or we could argue, but I am thinking out loud, uh, that the fragility of the atmospheres is permanent, is permanent due to the ever evolving and reforming of this actual form. From this perspective, we can argue, from this perspective of constant changing, we can argue that atmospheres are relational in their nature. In this sense, the becoming flux of the process of interlinking music and spoken narratives enables the emerging dramaturgy to create an intertwined composite of relational elements. Here, we understand the relational as proposed by Erin Manning in 2009 when she said, she writes, relation is not a union, is not a thing in itself. Relations are always relations of non-relations. As Deleuze would say, relations are relational in emergence, not relational as unto of the already existent. They are the binding agents of the not yet. They will never be known as such, but everything that is known will be will have been constituted to the singularity of a field of relations. Relations do not tell a story, they activate it. It calls it into telling money 2011. Furthermore, she continues, the change of relation is to pose it relation not as a secondary to experience with the human as a central locus of activity, but rather to begin to understand the relations as a force through which the very notion of witness can be felt. Okay, and money 2011. Engage in this suggested relational characteristic of the musical frames of the Louise stage and the participant subject, understood here as both the audience as the performer, is affected by the activation of the dramaturgical effects created by the compositional strategies, connected with the mediated process of the spatial temporal creation of the musical narrative, which serves as a catalyst for the emerging processes of the narrative sequences. In relation to this manner of narrative sequencing, we can relate this, or we can relate this to what Deleuze calls territorializations, deterritorializations, and re-territorializations, which are fundamental concepts in these descriptions of process philosophy. Using the analogy of an animal becoming man. Deleuze and Barnett, 2002, described these processes as follows. We will go back to the common places of the evolution of humanity, the deteriorized animal, when they said to us that the hominid removed its from us from the earth, and that the hen is the first love mother, the pregnant cell. These are the thresholds or the quantile deteriorization, which each time with a complementary re-territorialization. The locomotor hand has the deteriorized, sorry, I'm choosing words that I have trouble pronouncing. <laughs> <laughs> as the deterritorialized for is re-territorialized on the branches which is used to pass from tree to tree. The prehensible hand as deterritorialized locomotion is re-territorialized re on the thorn of Borrow elements called stools, that is the brandish or crocodile. And I'll make this more accessible now. In this definition, 
the loose presents a shift to processual territory which heterogeneous comments or elements, once they are established, they get re-established. So once one thing gets territorialized, meaning established, the deterritorialization re-territorializes something that has happened. So it's a process of once something's established, the new happen. I'm not bad at translating the letters, am I? <laughs> <laughs> With us theoretical definition, with what, what these theoretical definitions allow us to suggest is that viewed as a unique term of church strategy, Eloise is not fully constrained by the, log by the linear logic of traditional diagesis. Instead, Eloise becomes a network, a multidimensional narrative space in which a variety of other narrative texts blend and clash, enabling what Peter Goernich calls a composite heterocosmos of narrative place of compositions that refuses a complete survival totality, it creates rather than space of overlaps and implications. When each 2010 understood in this way, Eloise's narrative text is a tissue of references drawn from innumerable centers of practice, it is characterized by interdisciplinary links that can only be interpreted by the activation of the musical fragments. The Lewis philosophical notion of the event help us categorize this proposal. And he writes, in every event of becoming, sorry, in every event of becoming, there are many heterogeneous, always simultaneous components since each of them is a meanwhile. All within that meanwhile that makes them communicate through zones of intersectability, of undesitability. There are variations, modulations, intermittency, singularities of an, entity, of an infinite order. Each component of the event is actualized or effectuated in an instant, and that event the time that passes between that instant. The list quoted in Harvard and Stevenson. As an example, in several of the narrative sequences of Eloise, there are moments in which the audiences hear the same musical fragment repeated. Those fragments sometimes are recorded live and played again. Uh, there are other times in which the objects, the, what we would call the props, become themselves uh, musical instruments, and there are other times in which the body of the performers create or I use as musical instruments. And this is something I'm very interested in, in terms of their, uh, the musical sequences or the musical or the acoustics of the piece uh, are integrated or are created through a, a human and non-human elements to, to explore all those sequences. There are other moments in which uh, the microphones appear or start coming down from the ceiling, uh, from the stage rig, and create distortions of the human voice, and then they mix them with music and radio announcement. As an example, two pictures here. And, um, the whisker, as it is, <laughs> and the whisker became an instrument, and uh, the, the echoing of whisking to make cakes and, uh, became, also, and, uh, became also integrated in the overall acoustic. I forgot to say that. Very, very briefly, the storyline of Eloise is that Eloise is a French girl who, during the war, comes to England and works in a restaurant where the Nazis are occupying uh, Paris. That's the, the brief storyline. And in this one here, you see James, oh, James, because he was my student. <laughs> <laughs> you see James uh, and the other, the other two performers uh, and see moments in which uh, through the activation of the body as an instrument, acoustics have been repeated. So this becomes recorded live, and that recording gets protected and gets uh, engaged with throughout, throughout the performance. In this way, the presentness of the narrative moment produces and displays a double sense of multi-temporality. On the one hand, we are aware of the temporal rhythms of the narrative as a musical medium in a constant making of each mediatized attending variable, that is, the production of time by the performer and the performance calls attention to 
itself, to how the production of time, the time of the narrative, is being produced by constant processes of remediation. We link a little back to what Carl was saying in terms of the trans, uh, transmediality of the remediation processes. In this way, the agency of the musical instruments and the elements of the performance agency combine in a temporal creation of experience, enabling relationships where multiple levels of human and non-human agencies exist and created atmospheres that are multiple in their execution. As Timothy Barker said in 2012, the processes of using technological tools to interact with the world reveals itself to be fundamental to our experience of the world. In this regard, the use of objects as instruments and their recorded material allows as well for the creation of visual dramaturgies in the engagement with the practice, in the practice coming into being. And on the other hand, to finalize, the presentation of time is also multi-temporal because each mediatized element explores and shows a different temporal orchestration where the past and the future synchronize with the present. Or, as Deleuze says, the past and the future do not designate this uh, instance distinct from a supposed present instant, but rather the dimension of the present itself as far as this a construction of instant. In this manner, the convergence as tributary small water streams or creeks come into an ocean, to use a, a, an analogy as Deleuze would say, a, uh, of all these temporal orchestrations into a present moment allows for that creation of the visual to emerge at the very moment in which the musical instruments become the operative to enable a dramaturgical platform. And that's my thing. Thank you. <laughs> slightly thinking aloud. Um, the relationalities that you're talking about, are they relationalities between musician or performer and instrument, or between performance and sound? I would say both at the same time. My understanding of, uh, uh, my understanding of relationality uh, comes from, from and I'm going to go into this now, we have, this is quite philosophical to a constructivist reading of epistemology, where, which is how I understand this relational. What I, what, I, what I was trying to say is that, yes, there are pre-established elements on the, on the, on the stage and on the dramaturgy. Uh, if you look at the, at the picture, see, the set has been constructed. That's pre-established, that's pre-given. But the relations are not internal in terms of how the human being reacts to the, to the object, to the music itself, to the creation of the music. But there are relations that emerge at the moment in which the elements are activated. So from that perspective, there are relations between the, uh, the performers and the audiences, the performers and the pre-established dramaturgical elements, and, and the musical elements as being emergent at the moment. So the music in itself becomes relational in this piece because it's interlinked in all the modes of production. Can I ask you a question? Um, I'm, I'm thinking. Sure. <laughs> it, it sort of seems to me that um, is not music always relational? Yeah, in the in the emerging manner. Yes. And, uh, I would say so. I would say so. So the step that we're taking here yeah. is is a, 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 some manner of understanding that relational as not pre-given, but as emerging at the moment of the encounter between the spectators and performance. So it has an element of performative aspect to it. Right. I didn't use the word performative, but I have several problems with it. 
eh, para, eh, es, es somos an investment in the practice of doing for what, I, what I, uh, I call borrowing from my friend experience prior the doing of the doing how the doing becomes done does that make sense or I'm confusing you more now no I, yeah? I see what you're saying Sorry. but I would say that music is always relational it's yeah. just a man of understanding the angle of the perspective through which we look at it from an animal spirit I just find it interesting because of our history here at the Musician Show and this is the 